Ladies and gentlemen, may I invite you on my magical carpet for an amazing ride back in time. We, as society, have evolved in many ways. What we're always trying to find is purpose. 2,500 years ago, one of the greatest kingdom was created. It was created by Cyrus the Great. Was it because he had the strongest army and the strongest warriors, or that because he had a great idea? Back then, he wrote the, one of the first white paper that would change civilization forever, the first human rights. These human rights led to the society of Persia, the greatest things. Why? Because it enabled individual freedom by creating a purpose and creating, more importantly, a place where every different ethnic was allowed to have equality of race, but as well to freely express their religion. That same ideology was passed on to the Greeks 50 years later. But they took a step even further from that, which is that instead of having just one king, why not all we together could take a stance in decision making? And they created the first democracy, where we had voting powers, where people were finally able to think a little bit more than they were taught to, and actually think for the greater good. And thanks to that same ideology, we had so many great innovations that happened. We had so many great great philosophers. We had so many great momentum. Why? Because no more we not seek to be divided and have wars, but to work together in collaboration. And that's what brings great innovation. Now, let's pass on, not to Cyrus the Great, but actually to Cyrus the Ordinary. I grew up in the States. I was born there, and I was living the free lands, the capital of capital in New York. And as most youngsters, what you always feel is that, especially when you're living in New York, is that you have to make that big buck, right? You're a kid, you're very street smart, they all teach you you're going to make millions in your life, right? So as a kid, I was growing up, and I was like, oh yeah, I want a piece of that capital. You know, I have freedom individual, but I want free economy as well. I want to be that millionaire. So, like many others, I studied, went to grad school. What happened? I became a banker. And I was very proud of that. I became a private banker, then I worked in hedge fund management, and I was like, yes, I'm on that magical carpet, but the golden one this time, and I'm going to make those zillion dollars. Until one day after a long time, over a decade I was working in this industry, I tried to just talk about, am I free? Yes. Am I actually making money? Yes. But there's something missing. That little voice was in my mind. I was like, but what's going on, Cyrus? So I had a conversation clearly, and I was trying to speak to my young teenage. I know I was. As a teenager, I would say to myself, seriously, Cyrus? I mean, this is totally whack, man. You're working for the corporation, for Dark Vader. You're making money. It's not about decentralization. I mean, come on, man. We used to work, we used to like do every cool thing about decentralization. We used to do everything which was cool regarding, I don't know, like break dancing, like surfing and all of that. What happened to you? What happened, I mean, that's normal. I want to make the big buck. And I talked to myself carefully, and again, people, I was back into that teenage mode, like, Cyrus, what you're missing right now, it's your purpose. I mean, look, back then, we used to break dance. How can you go for break dance to banker? You guys don't believe me that I used to break dance? Or do you? You want to bust a move? Yeah. Okay, I'll bust a move for the time, huh? Let's go, guys. Stop your hands.
Now I remember that was 15 years ago, and now I'm a little bit sore about that. But what was very important is that I finally realized that, like many others, back then in 2001 when I was breakdancing, the most important thing was all about creating a purpose of life, finding a tribe, finding a place where we could freely share ideas or contents. And back then as a youngster, when I used to breakdance, the best thing that we used to crave for was breakbeat music and mixtapes. There was no YouTube, there was no of that. So what did we do? <clears throat> we went on the first digital exchange peer-to-peer, -peer, which was Napster. Napster enabled every content creator to share digital files, music, pictures, videos. DJs around the world were finally free to express not only on their ideas, but share together through this tribe, through this network, through this technology, the greater good. And there back then I said, I have to stop what I'm doing. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm just becoming a banker and, and looking for my own fulfilled desire of making a million dollars. So I quit. I'm not the one who broke my you know, laptop and, and the bank and the trading floor and got crazy, but I did quit my job. I, I did that like a little bit everyone. So when then I said it, what should I say? I said, okay, let's try something to find you, a cool thing to do. So I got into Bitcoin. And like many others, I realized that Bitcoin, again, it was a great way to get into this quick buck, right? This, this, again, this microwave capitalism that within a very short time, of, with very short time you're allowed to make a, a big return, right? And I said, okay, this is great, but then, I wrote a second white paper. This one, which I, which I read, sorry, is that I, I understood the philosophy that was behind Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper, and I realized what was Bitcoin. It was not about making a quick buck and quick money. It was about more than that. And that's when I suddenly realized that maybe wealth management, maybe finance is something good for me, but in a different way. Maybe blockchain is my saver. The great thing is that the future is now, and the future is bright. We all believe that society has to be ruled by a pyramid, where you need one Cyrus the Great, you need a big king, you need a CEO, you need a chairman, you need that, that big guy to take the decisions for everyone. I believe this is completely the opposite. Democracy t showed us that while we're living in a flat society, it's much better. It empowers every individual from a network. And that is exactly the philosophy and the mathematics behind blockchain. It enables each person to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions on a decentralized network that is owned by no one, no entity, and that which just really creates the power of it. Why is it real freedom? The fact, why is it really free? First, because it's accessible to everyone, the entire world. We're not talking about just a few privileges, we're talking the entire world, even Iran, North Korea, and all of these different countries that today are not able to, we are not able to trade with. Another thing which is very important is that, a great thing, is that you don't need much infrastructure. All the mainly infrastructure of technology that we have today is, is a big abundance we need for in order to connect. With blockchain, you just need internet, you just need, or if not, you need just a phone or a computer. And the best thing of this limitless technology is that it has no color, no gender, no religion, no politics, and, and, has, and therefore has no, no uh, nationality. True wealth. Why does it bring real true wealth? Well, think about all the refugees such as my parents in 1979 when they flew out of Iran. They had to leave in urgency, like happens to every refugee. You leave and you lose everything. Your status, your ID, your wealth, your lands. Thanks to blockchain technology, that's no more the case. You are the master of your data. You are the master of your wealth. You do not lose this. You have the keys, the private keys that enables you to have that private vault in order to keep your own sacred data. That's what changed much stronger. The second thing which is great about blockchain, it enables people to have 
track record. We could, lo we could look at every transaction. We can know exactly what wealth you have. We can know exactly what behavior happened. And that enables you to be transparent, not to prove yourself. The last thing, which is the most important thing. We heard today the word purpose. Purpose is what defines someone. Maybe a lot of people in the room say, I have this competence. I'm a coder. I'm a content writer. I, I'm a... I'm an engineer, I'm a data analyst. That's your skill sets, but that's not your purpose. And what is extremely important about these decentralized autonomous organizations that we find the blockchain ecosystem is that while you contribute to the network, you get rewarded, but for greater good because the network gets rewarded and therefore grows and actually rewards you back. It's a virtuous cycle that enables people to create win-win situations. And the greater thing is that there's no misalignments. As it is transparent, as there's no, let's say, shareholders with users, everyone's at the same level. It's a, it's, it's a flat organization that works towards one goal. And all together, if you contribute, you get rewarded in a very fair and transparent way. That's why I think this is the big game changer of tomorrow. And tomorrow is today. As we witness throughout societies and ideologies, we already have individual freedom in many countries. We have, as well, the possibility to get wealth. The difference with blockchain is that it gives you purpose, individual freedom, and individual wealth as well, which is something much greater than the other industries are offering today. I told you that Cyrus, the ordinary, wanted this million dollars. And I wanted this to have on my, my bank account. Today is not something that I want. What I want is to inspire one million people to find their purpose through blockchain in order to create a better world. My name is Cyrus Fazel. Thank you very much.